Daily Poem here in the Closer Reads Podcast Network. I am David Kern. This week is Halloween. And even if you're not into that holiday, even if you don't celebrate or trick or treat or dress up or throw parties or decorate your house in strange and mysterious ways, it's still a good week to read some creepy poems. So I figured I'm going to read poems that have a Halloween bent. Now I won't, you know, I won't get into anything too weird, but there are still some great poems out there um, that are both fun and creepy and some that are pretty meaningful and a little bit creepy. Um, Today's poem is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. She lived from 1892 to 1950 and uh, received the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1923. At the time, she was just the third woman to win the award for poetry. Richard Wilbur, who I read, I believe, last week, uh, wrote that uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote some of the best sonnets of the century, for what that's worth. Today's poem is called The Little Ghost, and here's how it goes. I knew her for a little ghost that in my garden walked. The wall is high, higher than most, and the green gate was locked. And yet I did not think of that till after she was gone. I knew her by the broad white hat, all ruffled she had on, by the dear ruffles round her feet, by her small hands that hung in their lace mitts, austere and sweet, her gowns white folds among. I watched to see if she would stay, what she would do, and oh, she looked as if she liked the way I let my garden grow. She bent above my favorite mint with conscious garden grace. She smiled and smiled. There was no hint of sadness on her face. She held her gown on either side to let her slippers show. And up the walk she went with pride the way great ladies go. And where the wall is built in new and is of ivy bare, she paused, then opened and passed through a gate that once was there. This is one of those masterful poems that a real poets produce. You know, this is there's no this is no hack job here. This is the real thing in a lot of ways. Um, on the one hand, the title suggests that this is a poem about perhaps a child who had died, um, but that it's presented in a way that makes this child seem very adult. But then you realize it flips back on itself, and it starts. You realize, oh no, actually, it does seem like a child, but then it's a child who's carrying herself like a great lady. And yet you get the sense of this like curiosity. This is not a ghost who our poet is afraid of, right? This is, this is not a ghost that the poet's running away from. This is a ghost that the poet is paying attention to. It makes you wonder what their relationship was. Was there someone like this in her life that she's seeing um, after this character, this character, this person passed away? Or is this the work of the imagination? Um, there's lots of ways you can interpret that. But I did a little Google search on it to see. I was just curious. I had to, I had a feeling people were going to be trying to read some sort of metaphor into this ghost. And sure enough, if you Google it, you'll see everywhere, help me figure out what the ghost represents. Um, and some people are saying, well, it must represent the St. Vincent Millay. It must represent this emotion or that way of thinking about the world or whatever which is precisely my least favorite way of thinking about poetry. Um, And this is one of those poems that is sure it's, we don't know what to think of it, right? We don't know. It it, it, it begs the question, what does this ghost represent? But on the other hand, who cares, right? On the other hand, why not just settle in? Why not just let the poem be what it is? Why not just let those images and metaphors work on us? Why not just let it settle into our subconscious? Why not just read it a few times? Why not just enjoy the language? Why do we have to immediately go to what does this represent? And I think that when we start forcing our students or ourselves or people we're talking with or whatever to start making every poetry, every poem, every image in a poem represent something, it's the equivalent of tearing apart a novel like we're dissecting a frog. We're trying to end the life of the poem. We're trying to make the poem into a ghost itself. Whereas if we let the poem just kind of live its life, let it be what it is, we're honoring the poem, honoring the poet, honoring the life of that poem. So that's what this poem makes me think about. 
This was a poem that was, by the way, published originally in Renaissance and other poems uh, in 1917. If you're interested in finding more from that collection. I'll read it one more time for you. I knew her for a little ghost that in my garden walked. The wall is high, higher than most, and the green gate was locked. And yet I did not think of that till after she was gone. I knew her by the broad white hat, all ruffled she had on. By the dear ruffles round her feet, by her small hands that hung in their lace mitts, austere and sweet, her gown's white folds among. I watched to see if she would stay, what she would do, and oh, she looked as if she liked the way I let my garden grow. She bent above my favored mint with conscious garden grace. She smiled and smiled. There was no hint of sadness on her face. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Thank you.